Next on Worcester News tonight, surveillance video shows a driverless truck crashing into the front steps of a Worcester home. A look at the investigation. And a stand against racism in the city. Brings residents together to celebrate culture and diversity. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Andy Madison. We begin tonight in Worcester, where an out of control truck slides down a hill, causing damage to the front of a house. The truck was delivering furniture on Shelby Street and the incident was all caught on camera. This was the scene on Shelby Street earlier today. A truck parked up the hill, rolls down the street past several houses, hits a parked car and crashes into a staircase. Steve Galati watched it all unfold on surveillance video. He says his elderly father was in front of the house a few minutes before the crash. Thank God that he, you know, he left, you know, five minutes, you know, five minutes later, it would have been a whole different story, you know, you know, the main concern is nobody got hurt. The truck was parked while two workers delivered furniture on Shelby Street. He asked me, how are we going to get it in? So I showed them. So I was inside showing my house and everything. When we come out, the truck was gone. The truck rolled down Shelby Street, coming to rest in the front yard of Galati's parents' house, doing significant damage to the front steps. The driver, who didn't go on camera, tells Worcester News Tonight he followed all the proper safety precautions while parking the truck. His co-worker was in the back and had to jump out when the truck started to roll. He says that the truck knocked him down. When we were talking in Spanish, that the truck knocked him down and he fell there. So we got, he, we got him up and we came down here to see what's going on. Galati set up surveillance video to monitor the street. No one was injured in the crash, but some are wondering why the truck was there to begin with. The state police were here. They said that truck was taken off the road three days ago for uh, safety violations and it shouldn't been on the road. So I don't know why it was on the road. Worcester police say the truck was inspected after the crash and they found an inoperable parking brake. The incident is under investigation. No word from state police. A Worcester man charged with sexually assaulting a four year old boy is being held on $25,000 bail. 19 year old Elijah Ortiz lives on Rodney Street in Worcester. He was arrested after the victim's mother noticed blood in his stool. The boy told his mom that Ortiz, who was known to the boy and the family, had put a toy gun and knife in his buttocks. Ortiz's attorney categorically denies the charges. The Worcester community coming together today against racism. The annual Stand Against Racism Forum featured Speaker Durakashan Raja. City officials joined kids and other groups on the common today. There was also a forum that discussed raising awareness on issues of racism and how people can affect real change in the lives of family, friends and coworkers. The YWCA says bringing individuals and organizations together is the key to ending racism. The event is a celebration of culture and diversity. I think as you see Worcester demographics changing, you know, it's about um, recognizing difference, accepting difference, um, you know, and, and trying to get along. Okay. The event on the common was just part of the celebration. Uh, speaking of celebration, a celebration of trees today on Arbor Day. After losing thousands due to the Asian longhorn beetle, the city says planting new trees is more important than ever. Our, our Patricia Nicholas has the details. Volunteers break ground at the Crow Hill Conservation Area Friday morning. 15 trees are being planted to celebrate Arbor Day. City Manager Ed Augustus says the day is special to Worcester. Replanting uh, trees and restoring some of what we've lost. I think Worcester more than most uh, appreciate the importance that trees play in our lives. Since the discovery of the invasive Asian longhorn beetle back in 2008, the city has lost nearly 30,000 trees. The Sierra Club says trees play an important part in our lives. Trees actually give off oxygen and they take in CO2. And humans, we take in oxygen and let out CO2. So it's really important um, that we keep, we, we plant trees all the time. But planting trees is not as easy as it looks. National Grids Anne Marie Moran says residents should consult with experts before they start to dig. It's just like having a pet, you want to care for it. If you just put a tree in the ground and walk away from it, you know, the chances are it's not going to survive. 
The Ecotarium was one of the many partners in the Arbor Day event. Many volunteers planted trees at their site. The Natural History Museum's president, Joe Cox, says celebrating Arbor Day fits their mission. Feeling nature and seeing a part of it and seeing it grow, that's why it's important. Patricia Nicholas, Worcester News Tonight. Worcester Regional Airport could be seeing more arrivals in the future. Massport has approved $32 million in funding for a new landing system. The Cat 3 landing system allows planes to land in almost all types of weather. Right now, planes are diverted from the airport when there's low visibility because of bad weather. This is a big help for the airport because officials say the location of the airport makes it susceptible to fog. The city manager says the new landing system will help the airport attract new business. Worcester Airport's really a critical piece of our um, efforts to revitalize the city of Worcester and having a working airport that gives people options, not only the options they have now through JetBlue to go to some Florida destinations, but I'm convinced that with the CAD3 system, it's going to allow us to attract other carriers to Worcester Airport that are going to give us other kind of cities that are served by Worcester Airport. The project is scheduled to be finished in late 2017. Police in Sturbridge looking for three men accused in an armed home invasion. Police say a 350 pound white man approached a victim outside his home on Birch Street yesterday, asking about odd jobs to do around the house. Minutes later, the man entered the victim's home, pointed a gun at his head and called two other men to join him. The victim was then tied up in order to open his safe. The thieves took coins and jewelry valued at $80,000. Police believe the victim was targeted and there's no threat to anyone else. A local author is educating people about cerebral palsy. In his latest book, he introduces readers to an Auburn boy who is living with the disorder. Our Brittany Shaper caught up with the author and the boy who is in the book and has their story. Four-year-old Elijah Gothier is reaching a world audience. The Auburn boy has cerebral palsy. A new children's book by Worcester author Dennis Vaness shares his story. It talks about a lot of the things that he can do and how, it, you know, promoting acceptance in the, uh, with children with cerebral palsy. I was thrilled when he decided that, yes, this is something that, you know, I, I want to get on board with and I want to help you spread awareness about cerebral palsy and um, Elijah's story. The main goal of this story is to help children understand disabilities at a young age. It's great to see children uh, see the look in their eyes that they're they're beginning to uh, understand that people are different. There's nothing wrong with people that are being different. According to CerebralPalsy.org, more than half a million people in the United States have the condition. Elijah's mother, Leah Gothier, says like many boys his age, Elijah loves football and music, and he just wants to fit in. Elijah loves to belong. He loves to be part of an integrated school system. He loves preschool. Elijah cannot speak, but his mother says he understands everything. When kids approach him and talk to him, and it, it, it just makes him feel very happy and included. And I think that um, the book you know, tries to give that message. Vanessa says he has loved getting to know Elijah, and he hopes awareness of disabilities spreads further than the city. And it seems to be working. The book has reached number one in the world on Amazon New Books and Special Education. Within the city, we have a lot of diversity, and we have... Uh, you know, a lot of children with special needs. So within our commu own community, we start and we try to uh, promote awareness for our children and hopefully it becomes a worldwide thing. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. It will be a busy weekend on Lake Quinsigamon with the return of the New England Rowing Championships. The regatta season starts Saturday at Regatta Point State Park with the 55th New England Rowing Championships. This weekend's event features several colleges from the region on Sunday, the Holy Cross women's team will compete in the 43rd Eastern Sprints. The lake is the home course for the Crusaders, and head coach Patrick Diggin says it doesn't get much better than Lake Quinsigamon. Well, we're really fortunate. Um, number one is it's a lake, so there's no current, uh, and that's, that makes us 
uh, that puts us at the top of the list anyways. Um, we've got a fully buoyed course. We've got seven uh, fully buoyed lanes. Um, the, and, uh, you know, we've got a great group of people here, volunteers, that want to want to make it good, want to make it a great experience. The lake will also host the 2016 Masters National Championships in 